Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, and we are here for one very specific reason. The old rule of if you see us, K-State either got a commitment or somebody's dead has kind of changed because uh, we, we're giving DY time to recuperate and do a bunch of other things. Uh, so normally when you see us, it could be a myriad of things, but we are back to the old rule today because K-State picked up a commitment over the weekend, and it's significant for a handful of reasons and interesting also because it was a recruitment that really didn't take very long in terms of when the offer came to when the commitment happened. And that is the fourth member of the K-State 2025 class. And it's Martell Jackson from Derby, a defensive back that K-State offered, I guess, was it last weekend? And then he went on his visit this past weekend and committed uh, soon thereafter, and now the Wildcats have landed a DB in this class, and it also is a guy from the state of Kansas, and not only that, it's from Derby, which any of you that have been following the lore of K-State football recruiting uh, realize has kind of been a house of horrors for K-State over the last uh, long, long time now, uh, but maybe Dylan Edwards kind of uh, loosened the pickle jar, and K-State is able to stick their hands in there, and they get Martell Jackson, who evidence of the recruiting just taking off k-state is his only offer that he has and none of the services have him ranked yet so this is really a big evaluation thing for k-state so what did they see in martell jackson that they like to get this thing done so quickly yeah the first thing that you can really point out with martell jackson and how he got the offer and kind of how his recruitment was just starting to go was something that I kind of pointed out in the commitment story where his he has really impressive track times, ran a 10.6 100 earlier in the spring, finished third in 6A state track in Kansas in the 200 as well. So he kind of fits that bill that K State really likes corners to be tall, long, and fast. And I think that that kind of fits Martel Jackson to a T. He's a little bit like Donovan McIntosh uh, from the 2023 class in that sense of kind of like that prototypical size with the speed and the length. And, and you can tell that his recruitment was just kind of starting to really move. But once K-8 offered, I think that he realized that this is where he wanted to be. And he was a wanted man, even though he didn't have any other offers. Uh, I know that for a fact that there, at least KU was interested in bringing him to another camp and kind of seeing him work out at KU. And I think there was a, another few programs as well that were trying to get involved. But once K-State got involved, it was kind of an open and shot case. And he was somebody that we kind of talked about. We didn't think was going to take too long. We just didn't know when an official visit was going to be scheduled. And then lo and behold, Friday night at uh, the skills camp that K-State hosted, when they had 11 official visitors, they let them all kind of go out onto the field. And you kind of got to see who all was there. and we saw Martell Jackson there. Uh, that was something that like, as soon as you kind of saw him, that's something that you knew, okay, this is probably going to happen re relatively quickly. Yeah. So it gets wrapped up quick. And now with it being done, we, we kind of use Gus Hawkins as the, the example for some of this stuff where K-State got that thing done in a hurry, relatively speaking. And then we didn't know of anything else that happened in that recruitment. No other offers were posted until Ole Miss kind of tried to wiggle their way in there, but that, that felt almost more like Gus Hawkins doing them a solid and, you know, being respectful uh, to, to their program. So with Martell Jackson now, like what, what comes next? What is the, the next steps here that everybody should be aware of? Uh, the next steps for Jackson, honestly, is probably just going to be once he gets his rating, because I know that he wasn't rated by any site kind of going into this weekend. But he has lots of fun tape. You can kind of see what he does well. He's going to be a boundary corner because he's 6'2 with really long arms. And, and like I said, like this speed thing like is a legitimate thing. Like look at who K-8 has brought in at the corner spot recently. And they would make a pretty dang good track team. I mean, Donovan McIntosh was somebody I mentioned. Kenigel Thomas was also a big time track guy. Jacob Parrish was a big time track guy. I mean, he wasn't a corner initially, but Keenan Garber was one of the fastest players on the team. 
So I think that the next steps for Jackson is just going to be kind of getting more acclimated with K-State. I know that K-State had been on Jackson for a while before he ended up getting the offer and committed. But it's more it's mostly just going to be getting acclimated. And, I mean, he was around all the other official visitors, so I imagine that at least with some of the secondary targets that he'll probably be pretty involved in trying to get them to join him at K-State as well. Yeah, so th- this seems like one of those where the the measurables are there for K State to really like it. They've seen enough; they trust him, and and what will also develop out of this. Uh, in terms of n- now moving forward, what what does this signal in the grand scheme of K State's recruitment uh, when it comes to this position, and then also moving forward the rest of the twenty twenty five class. I think that for this position going forward, it means that you have, well, obviously, like you have one less spot. So if you are a corner that's kind of on the brink, you probably need to think about what you want to do because spots could fill up rather quickly. Cameron Jamerson was on campus over the weekend as well. Another corner from Houston who also has really good speed. And then Jojo Scott from Florida will be on campus uh, this coming weekend. So it's kind of like a, if you're on the brink, you probably only have one more spot to kind of play with. And now you're at four commitments total in the class. So I think that it it's probably the start of kind of like the, the floodgates being open because I, I could see K-State getting on the board probably two, three, four more times between now and probably next Wednesday, Thursday, because there's so many guys that are kind of on that brink and we're kind of just waiting and seeing. Uh, But for in-state recruiting, this is kind of like another example of K-State finding the in-state gyms that they really like that probably don't have a lot of other offers, but K-State saw something and kind of, and they've been recruiting Jackson for a long time. And part of what makes the camp scene really impressive is how much like these kids have been talking with the K-State coaching staff just to try to get them to go to a camp. And like Jackson was a guy that had been talking to K-State for a really, really long time. And that's why it's impressive to me that they can get him to go to a camp because they want to see him work out and then he gets the offer and then they kind of just go from there. So this is one where in the secondary recently like i i just don't see any reason to think that jackson probably won't work out because kc has been just nails in the secondary and especially with the prototypical size i just really like how he plays and he has a little bit of a nastiness to him i mean he's he's physical too and he's somebody that has been working really hard since this past fall to get ready for a senior season as well yeah 38 tackles last year uh at derby so uh, obviously got involved quite a bit there in that position and now kind of looking around and and how things map out and what comes next obviously for him and everything uh, I'll put you a little bit on the spot here but in terms of what will this look like when Martell Jackson finally sees the field at K-State and what would a timeline for that be like for people because I think with these in-state guys there's uh, a lot more attention that goes into that. Like how quickly w- could we see Martell Jackson on the field? Like how much is there that needs to be brought up to speed? Obviously you've got a full year of high school to still get through. So like that's, that's baked into this. I understand, you know, you you can tell me like, well, there's going to be a long time. I get that. <laughs> but like realistically, what, what are we looking at here and what is it that K-State uh, can expect over the career of Martell Jackson? I think that it could be a few years, like probably at at least a red shirt once he initially gets on campus and you kind of go from there because he is a little bit raw. And I think that just at corner, you want you probably don't want to throw a really young player into the fire right away because I mean, I, I make this kind of joke all the time with secondary guys that it's just so much harder to play in the secondary because you make one mistake and the other team's fight song is playing. And when do you make mistakes? When you are a younger player that that probably doesn't have great eye discipline and doesn't really kind of know all the nuances of being a corner. So I imagine that it's probably a red shirt and then just kind of see from there. But he's somebody that has been 
kind of on the upward trajectory before. So I and with his speed and with his physicality, I think that he could be somebody that could play special teams though right away. Yeah, well, good size there uh, for for Martell Jackson, and he does uh, he does now have three stars from twenty four seven. So I'm sure his other ratings will start to trickle in across, obviously on three, and then uh, whoever else follows suit as well. So that's at least one thing to toss in there. But he does have that first rating in, and it'll only continue to expand. And now, when you're committed to a place like K State, there's going to be more attention to you uh, throughout the evaluation process that'll come uh, the rest of the summer and the fall. And I'm sure we'll see how that ends up working out. But K-State adds their fourth commit of the class of 2025, Martell Jackson from Derby. And now the Wildcats wait and see if uh, anybody else that was on campus this weekend decides to pop off and join the class. If they do, we'll have more for you right here on the K-State Online YouTube page as well as over at kstateonline.com. You can find us at On3, and uh, we'll have you in the know with everything you need about K-State's commitments and uh, who might be coming next. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.